can't be marvelous all the time. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Marvel movie blunders. <laughs> Before we begin, we've got something big in the works. So be sure to tune in to Watch Mojo Live on May 31st for special musical performances and much more. For this list, we're singling out creative decisions in Marvel movies that were embarrassing, stupid, or completely unnecessary, and ended up hurting the film's overall quality. Since we'll be giving away some key plot details, a spoiler alert is in order. Number 10. Killing Off Important Characters X-Men The Last Stand In terms of comic book adaptations, the third X-Men film wasn't exactly a critical darling in the eyes of audiences. Among its many controversial creative choices, one of the most frustrating decisions for fans was to kill off many beloved characters. Although a pivotal plot point, the death of Professor X felt sudden and jarring, leading many to believe the movie could have done without it. Furthermore, the death of Cyclops ignited intense backlash from X-Men fans, as he's supposed to be the strong, brave leader of the mutant ensemble. Yet he was killed off barely 20 minutes into the flick, off-screen no less. Cyclops and all of us deserved better. Number 9. A Campier Tone Blade Trinity The first two Blade films helped kickstart the modern age of comic book film adaptations. These movies took the character seriously, thus proving that competently made superhero flicks could be done properly. <laughs> By the time the third film came around, however, this Blade had seriously lost its edge, completely abandoning any of the grittiness and attitude that made its predecessors so beloved. While we love Ryan Reynolds, his non-stop one-liners felt out of place in a Blade film. Of course, it wasn't all his fault. The plot as a whole felt incredibly goofy, with Dracula being brought back to life, vampire Pomeranian hybrids, and of course, Triple H's wrestling moves. Number 8. Gwen Stacy Dying Too Early – The Amazing Spider-Man 2 <laughs> Yeah, yeah, fan service is great and all, but the second Amazing Spider-Man film did not properly build up to this iconic comic book moment. While the chemistry between Peter and Gwen is excellent, and was enough to at least make us feel sad when she's killed, the movie just tried to juggle one too many storylines, leaving little room for us to truly feel the tragedy of her death. The sequence as a whole just felt rushed and out of nowhere, and considering Peter seemed to get over it within 10 minutes of screen time completely took away from any dramatic weight the filmmakers were trying to build. And even if we fail, what better way is there to live? Number 7. Victor Von Doom, Doom, Fantastic Four The 2015 reboot of Marvel's first family has a treasure trove of problems to poke fun at, but we feel the biggest offender was the awful depiction of Doctor Doom. Doom was basically just some computer nerd who lived in a basement. After being affected by the same radiation that gave the Fantastic Four their powers, he practically disappeared for the better part of the film, only popping up again in the last 15 minutes for a painfully rushed climax. You know it's bad when it makes the 2005 version look good. I didn't turn into a monster. Ben! Number 6. The Mandarin Twist Iron Man 3 America. Ready for another lesson. In the comics, the Mandarin is Iron Man's arch nemesis, utilizing his rings of magical power to combat the armored Avenger time and time again. In Iron Man 3, he was initially stripped down to a more realistic level making him a vicious terrorist instead. I'm gonna shoot him in the head. <laughs> Live on your television in 30 seconds. Okay, we could have stomached that, but then the movie pulled the old switcheroo, revealing that the Mandarin was just an actor pretending to be the Mandarin. 
serving as a distraction while the real deal operated in the shadows. Don't hurt the face, I'm an actor. Uh, a for effort and all, but this change just didn't work, as it destroyed any established tension surrounding the character, instead making things all a big joke. I am the Mandarin! Number 5. Misusing Venom, Spider-Man 3 I want you to kill Peter Parker. Spider-Man has quite a diverse and interesting rogues gallery, with enemies like Green Goblin and Dr. Octopus. But for many Spidey fans, Venom stands above them all, as his menacing personality and physical prowess make him a formidable opponent for the wall crawler. Such low grade weapon here. Have some of mine. Unfortunately, everything that made Venom great was lost in translation to the big screen, shrinking the character down to a much smaller, less imposing size and casting Topher Grace as Eddie Brock didn't help much either. I know all about you. Like the fact that Spider-Man won't let you help your poor daughter. Venom is meant to be a brutal, intimidating archenemy to Spider-Man. But here he was just an afterthought, tossed into the last third of the film, coming nowhere close to his comic book counterpart. Never wound. What you can't kill. Number 4. Nicolas Cage as Johnny Blaze and Ghost Rider, Ghost Rider. Look into my eyes. It's worth mentioning that Nicolas Cage, love him or hate him, is a huge fan of the Ghost Rider character. So landing this acting gig was like a dream job for him. But big fan or not, his interpretation of the spirit of vengeance fell flat thanks to an emphasis on goofiness over intensity. Feel their pain. Ghost Rider fights the forces of darkness, something that can't quite be taken seriously when Cage is chewing on jelly beans and laughing at monkeys on his TV. <laughs> the Ghost Rider himself was pretty cool, but we all knew at the back of our minds that he would eventually transform back into Nicolas Cage, shattering the badassness of the character. Number 3. The Dancing Scenes – Spider-Man 3 it was an alien symbiote that latched onto Eddie Brock and transformed him into Venom. And we already know how that turned out. But initially, that same symbiote bonded to Peter Parker and turned him into a dancing queen. The black suit is supposed to fill its host with rage and hostility towards others, with a tendency to lash out in fits of violence without warning. What did we get instead in the third Spider-Man film? Peter Parker sporting an emo hairstyle, possible black eyeliner, and grooving his way up and down New York streets, from city sidewalks to jazz bars. This is for you. If anybody involved with this project actually had Spidey senses, they would have known this was a bad idea. Thanks. Number two, the playground fight, Daredevil. Take it easy. I don't like being touched. While the 2003 film interpretation of Daredevil did have some good moments, it mostly felt like a misfire. For one thing, why would a movie that was attempting to adapt one of Marvel's most edgy and dark superheroes have an absurdly silly martial arts fight in a playground in broad daylight? Considering a prior sequence showed us DD brutally beating up thugs in a bar fight, this playground sequence completely ruined the atmosphere the movie was building until that point. So does every guy have to go through all this just to find out your name? Try asking for my number. Throw in some cringe-worthy one-liners, over-the-top choreography, and the fact that Elektra essentially decides to beat up a blind man, and this became a truly painful moment to sit through. My name's Elektra Nachos. Thanks. That's all I wanted to know. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Just one good night kiss, sweet ducky. Come on, Howard, I was just kidding. Good night. Number one, Deadpool, the Merc with no mouth. X-Men Origins Wolverine. 
Where, oh, where to begin? He didn't have swords in his arms, nor could he zap you with optic blasts from his eyes. Ugh, it's painful just talking about this. Furthermore, his physical design was all wrong, as this version was missing the traditional red outfit. But as if that weren't bad enough, they decided to sew his mouth shut. Come on, guys, he's called the Merc with a Mouth. Okay, people are dead. Deadpool likes to crack jokes. He needs his mouth. You know it's bad when a film from the same studio years later pokes fun at how stupid this decision was. Why don't you do us all a favor and shut the f up? Or I'll sew your pretty mouth shut. Oh, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.